even though you draw your cutout characters as separate pieces shown on different columns, sometimes you need to remove the joining line so that the body parts merge and look more natural. Well that's what we'll be looking at today. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to today's video. If you're new here my name's Darren and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. And if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe to follow along? For the past few weeks I've been walking you through setting up and working with cutout animation and you can see a link to the playlist in the description below. But today I'd like to show two different techniques to hide your character's joint lines. Which means you can get characters like this, where if you look at the wrist on the left hand you can't see the joint between the hand and the lower arm, even though they're drawn as two different filled shapes on two different layers. And there's other techniques for doing this, but today I'll just show two of them. And the same as most of my tutorials, you can see a contents list in the description below with links so you can jump between sections. So if you want, you can jump straight to the effects demo. But the first technique is the sandwich technique, and this involves four steps. Duplicating the drawings in a level to create a new level, removing the lines of the duplicate, ordering these two levels either side of their adjoining part to create a sandwich, and then parenting the new level to the old so that it moves with it. And it's something that's hard to explain in words, and although I've seen a few videos explaining it, including a great one from Joshua Shute that I've linked in the description, it took me a while to get my head around it. But now I have, let me show you with an example. So let me first introduce you to this red character. If I turn off the preview mode, and then first we've got the body in the center. Next to that is the left arm one, followed by the left arm two, followed by the hand. And on his right hand side the same, the right arm one is at the shoulder, the right arm two is the lower arm, and then the right hand. So to create the sandwich around the lower left arm, I had the hand drawing, and I duplicated it and created the fill. So to make it easier to see the sandwich, let me just change the colour of all three parts and then show you in the order they're displayed. So start with the fill, we'll make that green, and then we'll change the hand and make that blue. So the hand is shown first, and then in front of that is the left arm to the lower arm, and you can see that covers up part of the hand as it's in front of it. Then in front of that is the hand fill, and you can see that covers up both the blue of the hand and part of the line of the hand, but you'll see that in a second, and also the arm. And if we change that colour back to red, you'll see it blends in with the arm, and then when you put the preview on, this little line that's at the top disappears. Okay, let's just put the hand back to red, and let me show you how I created the sandwich. So if next we create a sandwich on the elbow between the upper arm and lower arm, that's L arm 2, left arm 2, and left arm 1. So we're working from back to front, so the lower arm, left arm 2, is behind left arm 1. So we simply go to left arm 2, and you select all the drawings, in this case only one. Go to the cells option, and down to clone. It'll suggest the name for the clone, but I'll have something more specific, so it's clearer to read in the schematic. So again, the sandwich is the lower arm being sandwiched around the upper arm. So we want the lower arm behind the upper arm, which is here. And then the fill in front of the upper arm. So we just need to drag that to the right of the upper arm. And you'll notice that this is drawn in front of the upper arm and in front of the hand. So we simply need to move the fill of the hand back outside in front of that. And I've got a crib sheet in the description that you can download that gives you an example to show the ordering of these columns. Okay, so the next thing is to remove the line from the fill drawing. And we do that by going to the drawing, and then with the selection tool, selecting on the drawing, and you'll see the line pump here, which you can click and then drag to bring the thickness down to zero. And if you've got the options in the toolbar, you can do this up here at the top right, where it was two millimeters. Just click in here, type zero, and press enter. Now something about the line thickness that's really important to understand, and that's that the thickness moves out from the centre of where the line is drawn. So let me just show you that quickly. So if I set the thickness to be 10, so this dotted line shows where the centre of the outline is, and if you make it thinner, 
or fatter, it moves around the centre line. Now why that's important to understand is that if you've got a 2mm line around the whole of your character, when you make this fill zero, it actually only reveals a 1mm line from behind. And that's because on the drawing behind, there's 1mm to the right of the centre line and 1mm to the left, which is now covered up by the red fill of the front part of the sandwich. And here between the upper arm and the lower arm, you can see the difference, where the upper arm's line is twice as thick as the lower arm. And obviously you don't need the full area of the arm fill here, just the part that overlaps the elbow. But by cloning the actual drawing, is an easy way to get that. OK, so again to see where the sandwich goes, we'll look at the fill level and we'll change the colour to green. And hopefully you can see here, the green fill of the forearm is in front of the upper arm, but behind the hand. So let's put that back to red. And again, if you click on the preview, you get to see the fills without the adjoining lines. Finally, you need to parent the fill layer to the back layer. And if you don't do this, it means that if you try to rotate or move the arm, the fill doesn't follow. So all you need to do is to take the fill and connect it up to the original drawing. So the left arm to fill connected to the left arm to. And now, if you animate the left arm to, the fill moves with it. So there you go, that's the sandwich in action. And hiding the lines this way is great because you can see the results in real time, but you do end up with double the number of layers and if you change the drawing, you might have to recreate the cloned non-line version. So this might not be the easiest way to manage your full characters, but it could be useful for smaller characters. But this leads us to the second way to achieve a similar result. So the second way to hide intersecting lines is to use the open tunes effects, and this is my preferred method. So let's work with the same character again, and I've removed the duplicate column so we're starting from the basic drawing. So the principle is similar to the sandwich technique, that we want to duplicate the drawing, show all the drawing at the back with the lines, and then show only the fill at the front surrounding the adjoining body part. So I've already done this for the left arm to the hand, and you can see the effects at the bottom here, two of them. So let me just add the same effects to the upper arm. So again, we work from the drawing at the back through to the drawing at the front. So first we need a matte out effect, and if we go to add effects, matte, matte out, and what this is going to do is show the upper arm with the fill and the line everywhere on screen apart from where the lower arm is. So it'll show the upper arm here, down to there, and then go straight across and back up so you won't see this triangle of black lines here overlapping. So we'll plug the upper arm into the source. We'll delete the output to go straight to the X sheet. So now the upper arm isn't available on the X sheet and we'll send the output from the math effect straight to the X sheet. And that just sends that drawing straight through to all be visible because it's not yet set to matte. And to set to matte, we just drag from the triangle of the lower arm into the matte. So you can see it's immediately only drawn the upper arm where the lower arm isn't. So now we need to show the fill of the upper arm in front of the lower arm. And we do this with a palette filter. And you'll find this in the Tunes Level category. So right click, Add an Effects, Tunes Level, Palette Filter. OK, so we'll plug the upper arm into there, and then we'll plug that into the X sheet. And if you double click on the palette filter, you can see the options. So what this effect does, it allows you to keep or delete lines or areas for specific colour indexes in your palette for this level. So what we want to do for this effect is to keep the fill and remove the lines. So you can do it either way by keeping the fill or by deleting the lines. But the way I'd recommend to do it in this case is to delete the lines with colour number 1. That means you can draw lines with other colours or do other fills on the body and all of them will be kept. So all you do is change the index to number 1. And you have to remember that the colours are indexed from 0. So the first one is 0, then 1, and then the red is 2. It applies only to lines. And the action is to delete the lines. And you saw immediately, because I've got the preview on up here, that the line disappeared. And you might want to experiment with the other options for your specific purpose. But it's basically as simple as that. So you just need to apply these two effects to the rest of the body parts. And now we've got two, you can select them, choose Control C, then you must click away, and then you can do Control V to paste them, and then you've got them ready to use for the next part. 
So let me just do that. Okay, so that's how easy it is to apply it to the rest of the body. And because we've copied them, the values are all set up to delete the lines with colour number one. So I'll just do that for the rest of the body and set up a quick animation. And one last effect I added to both hands was to add a palette filter as well as the standard output. And that's because they were at the end of the sandwich chain so they hadn't got a palette filter to thin the lines. So without it, if I click that, you get a thick line for both hands because it's the full 3mm of thickness whereas if I put the palette filter back on it removes the outline which makes the fill slightly thicker and that covers some of the line. As I mentioned earlier, the thickness of the palette lines is halved because of the palette filter. So to keep consistency to all body parts, I added this palette filter onto both hands. And I've also added a small animation, so if we take a look at that. And so that's it, that's the final result. So that's the two ways to hide the intersecting lines of the body parts of your cutout character. Personally I think the effects method is much quicker and easier to manage, but give it a go and see which you prefer. So that's it for this week, and if you've got any questions about this or any other part of cutout, just leave them below and I'll try and help. And as always, give this a like if you enjoyed it, share it with friends that are working in open tombs, and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post again. And I'll be back next week with another video. And that's a guarantee.